Hi, hi everyone. Okay, so today it's all about grapes. So it's me again, Kathleen from the Zen Art team, and uh, it's another watercolor painting session. And today it's all about grapes. So I chose just a small bunch, not a huge bunch of grapes, so that you can instead focus on um, how to paint the grapes rather than going through um, the long process of painting a big bunch of grapes. Okay, so the thing with grapes is um, that it's not um, a shiny surface, but um, it's smooth. So it you still need to have some highlights in there. And But since it's not um, shiny, um, it's also forgiving in the sense that when you paint it, um, you don't have to make, to make sure that... Um, the surface um, will look smooth and um, very fine. Okay, so now I'm going to um, flip the camera down to my desk so that uh, we can start painting. Okay, so today I'm I picked just um, a small size paper. Well, actually, this is from a big, this is from our big <clears throat> watercolor pad. So I just cut it into four. That's the thing about big pads is that um, you have the choice of using the, the huge full page or just cut it into smaller <clears throat> sizes. So it's from this pad. Um, this is um, full pressed, 100% um, cotton, um, 300 GSM. So I cut it into four um, parts. Hello, Linda. Good morning. So again, it's also useful to have a huge pad because um, sometimes you also want to explore painting big. So explore a small painting big and painting small. Okay, but um, if you're starting out, um, I think you should start smaller because um, then the pressure is also less um, to get things perfect, you know, while you're still there. Okay, so grapes. Uh, the color that I chose is uh, purplish, reddish, um, purple grapes, um, sometimes there's also dark purple, sometimes there's uh, more on the red side, and sometimes there's a good mix of the two colors. Okay, so I'm going to use colors from these two uh, palettes, and then I'll just have uh, an extra mixing plate on the side. My small, cute mixing plate that I use for when I'm just dealing with a few colors. Okay, so um, this is perfect because it has um, already purple. You have I actually have two kinds that I can choose from: ultramarine violet right here and dioxazine purple. Um, and then you can just add red and blue to your mixture, and um, you're going to have um, a nice shade of grapes. So you can use um, ultramarine blue, and then you can also use um, pearl red. Okay. So let's start. Okay, I'm just going to choose brushes so that okay, let me let me get a bigger round brush. Okay, so no um, no need to go into so much detail with this one. Okay, so let me use this one. Okay, so if you if you have your brushes that like me, you weren't able to store properly. Um, just wet it and then shape it back into form and leave it to dry. If it still persists, you can use um, soap. Um, I have a brush cleaning soap that I use also to reshape my brushes. I just lather it in. Um, don't rinse it. Leave it to dry and shape it back into shape. So I will do this later for this, but meanwhile, I can still use it. Okay, so I'll start with my purple. So you can um, you can choose the colors. Um, you can try them out and see which purple from your choices looks better. So let's try it out. Um, I have ultramarine violet. Okay, and then let's try the dioxazine purple. Okay, so this is um, darker and this is a bit warmer. So. I'll go for this one and I can use this one um, for the darker areas later on. Okay, so first up is the purple. Okay, dio um, dioxazine purple. 
So what we'll be doing is we'll apply it all over. So the grapes in the front will have um, more highlights than the ones at the back. So you just leave um, areas that are white. So just paint around it. Okay, so let's start. We'll, we'll paint all the grapes. I'm also painting around the stem. Okay, so what I do is I already paint around the part that will be the highlight so that it's done and I don't accidentally paint over it. Okay, and here too. So this is just one layer of just one purple. Okay, so make sure to do this quickly because otherwise um, you will have a hard edge once it dries. And if you don't want that, then you have to go over it quickly. Okay, so do this for the entire, um, they call this bunch. Once at the back, you don't really have to worry about highlights because they will be in shadow. So the chances of them having highlights would be very low. And don't forget to leave the highlights. So if you'd want to not have to worry about it, then you can always use um, a masking fluid. Um, I do that sometimes, not often, but I do have masking fluid for the times that I just want to preserve some areas. Like, let's say if you want to work on the background first, so for moments like that, um, a masking fluid will come in really handy. So you'll be doing at least um, three layers for this. So today we're painting more relaxed, loosely, so you don't have to worry about getting things too perfect. And don't worry about getting all the, the shape of the grapes the same size. Okay, so don't worry, this is just the first layer. So this won't be this flat purple color. And don't worry if you go past your sketch. As long as you get the shape right, the circular shape, then that's fine. Okay, so I'll share the line drawing that I did after. Not to worry, it's not too hard. But I'll share it after so you can use that if you want as your guide or you can choose your own bunch of grapes as well if you want since you will already know how to do it from the session today so who here loves grapes I love grapes and I love 
what we can get from grapes, which is wine. Okay, there you go. That's the first layer. And again, um, in your own time, you can wait for this to naturally dry. Um, or you can use a blow dryer or a heat gun, whichever is easier for you or which one you have. If you don't, no worries. You can just wait for it to naturally dry. So this is your nice base color. Now let's um, add some red. Okay. Oh, no, the other red. Sorry, this red. This more neutral red. Okay, so I want a, you want a red that's um, on the neutral side or on the um, cooler side rather than warm. Yes, wine. <laughs> wine is always good. Okay, so I have here a mix of dioxazine purple with red, and then I'll have one with just red. Okay, so you get a sort of magenta color right here, um, which is perfect for creating um, dimension to your, for giving your grapes dimension. Okay, so let's add here and there, not all over. Okay, what I'll do is I'll add it here, then soften it a bit. Here too. So your grapes are starting to look not so flat. Again, don't worry about making things too smooth. And like I always say, that's the nice thing about painting botanical stuff and fruit and food is you don't have to get things perfect because they are not. So it gives you a more relaxed experience, painting experience. Okay, so I'm adding it here and there, not the entire grape. Okay, so this is our second layer. You can uh, you can even create a much rougher texture. Okay, I'm just really I always tend to do things more on the realistic side, but actually you can be much looser. So for the ones at the back, I can do the whole thing. Oops. Okay, let's add some more. So wine is, when I was a child, I hated grapes at the beginning because, um, well, the first ones I ate were not seedless, and it was just like too much bother, <laughs> Eat, eating each one and having to spit out a, um, a seed every time. It's just too much of a bother for me. But then, of course, came the experience of seedless grapes and well there you go <laughs> okay and also add a bit on the edge so with this you can really just have fun but you can use at least hi joe wow glad you could make it with grapes 
I chose this color because um, you can just do so much more compared to um, the pale green grapes. You can do that too. I think it would be um, easier, lighter. But with this one, you can really have fun. Okay, so at the back, I'm just going to cover the whole grape in the color. Unlike here where I just added here and there with the, the ones at the back, I will paint the whole, the entire grape that's visible. Okay. And the more that we layer the different colors later on, it will become um, darker. This is the same um, mixture right here. So it's the same color, but instead of just adding it here and there and softening it outwards for the ones at the back, you just use the entire, uh, you use the same color for the entire shape. So um, it just comes out darker because you don't thin it. Okay, so um, there's a second layer. So I'm going to dry again. But actually very easy. You just layer and layer. Um, no tiny details that you need to get um, out of the way except just for the highlights and once you have that down from at the first layer then adding layer by layer later on um, won't be so hard as long as you don't paint over the highlights. Okay, so now it's time for some ultramarine blue. Okay, so this is the blue um, that I'm aiming for. Um, I'm not going to use this because I don't want my grapes to come out too purple. I want it to be a more muted purple, which is what um, the purple of the grapes um, is. So I will use ultramarine blue. Okay, so it's this one. Ultramarine blue. So let's get a bit of it. And I will still eat, add some of the dioxazine purple to it. Okay, and now we'll add it um, again, another layer. So it's too purple. Um, let's add more blue. Again, you can always test it out in your paper, just to be sure. Now I'm adding even more texture. So we will do a few more layers just to give things more volume. So again, you can do this on your own time. You don't have to finish it in one go. If you paint the darker per um, great darker purple then you're probably going to need less color so just like how we applied the red we're not going to use it all over And right now it's still looking more on the flat side because we still haven't added the deeper shadows which we will um, at the later part so don't worry you will get your contrast later on 
very important to add contrast to your work, especially for the more realistic style. Almost finished with this layer. And again, don't forget to the grapes at the back. For the areas that are in the shadow, you can just totally be darker there. Okay, and then I will now dry again. And then let's add another layer of the magenta, now more saturated deeper so I'll add more red and now I'm going to go and get um, some of the ultramarine violet just to have the deeper violet okay and again you can always test it out okay I like it very wine color actually Let's wait for the camera to focus. There you go. Okay, so now we're going to add extra um, dimension. So I'm going to focus on the areas like here at the back. And I'll just soften the edges a bit, not too much. If you feel like some parts are too dark, just lift it off. Okay, so remember some parts will be darker and the areas near the highlight will be lighter because that means that um, there's more light that hits there. Areas where a grape is in front, it will have more shadow. So keep that in mind. So when you're painting blueberries, it's actually kind of similar. So if you do grapes, then blueberry won't be so far behind technique-wise.
Okay, so I'm going to dry a bit so that I can add the other parts that are beside each other. Okay, continue. Just a quick dry. Oops. Okay, let me just check if I've covered what I should have here too. So this will have shadow as well because again this is over this one. So when you, the, the more often you paint, um, these things will become more um, natural to you, like instinctive. You just know areas that um, have overlap will definitely have shadow. Sometimes I just add like to add a bit of color here and there. Okay, so your graves are starting to become more um, 3D now. So I'm going to um, add the darker areas so that I can um, get a better um, idea of things. Okay, so for that, I'm going to mix my ultramarine violet. and ultramarine blue. Okay, so a very, very deep um, purple. Okay, so let's add it to the areas that are at the back right here. Okay, so be careful not to paint over the shape of the grape in front. So to keep the roundness of the grape. You can switch to a smaller brush at this point. And here, um, it will have very dark areas, like right here. But as it, as the grape becomes exposed on this side, it will become lighter. So just add your color up to there. Then you can thin it down on your brush and pull the color from here upwards. Okay, so very dark here and it will lighten as it um, goes to the section where light is starting to hit it. Okay, now let's add more. We have dark areas here too. Where this grape is on top of this grape. That will leave a shadow. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll add that now. Okay, so once you add these shadows in, your work will have a much better contrast and you'll start to see things come out as they should. Okay, so more often than not, um, when I first started drawing or painting, that was my weakness. I was so afraid to do 
really dark shadows and because of that my work also suffered it was so um, bland I would say so the moment that you get past your fear of uh, doing your darks um, your works will also have better contrast and they will look better okay so trying to find all the sections with the dark areas So same idea here, dark here, and then as it moves towards the section where it's going to get some light, it will be lighter. If you find it too blue, you can always add another layer of purple after, once this layer dries. But for me, I'm happy with it. Again, um, painting is really also a matter of preference with the colors that you end up using and mixing. Um, even if I use certain colors, if you don't like it, you can totally replace it with your preferred color. Okay, so this is in shadow. And then I'll just thin the outside areas a bit. Okay, and you can see, you can you already um, can distinguish the grapes at the back, the grapes um, in the middle, like here, and the grapes in front. So your shadows, adding your deep, deep shadows um, really makes a huge difference. But don't go overboard, okay? Just the light is not too dim. So the shadows are not too big either. So just the right amount of shadow. Again, it will always depend on the lighting. If you want more dramatic lighting, then you can, of course, um, create your own composition. You can definitely buy your own fruits, your own grapes, and compose it and do, set up your own lighting. You can just use natural light from the sun, uh, but I suggest um, to have one light source. I'm also going to add some shadow here because this grape is behind this one. But not too dark because it's also at the top. So it does get more light compared to the ones here. Okay, um, let me just, here too, I've missed this part. So let me just go over that. You will also have some shadow here. Okay, so now I'm just going to add touches of red here and there, just to give it a pop of color, so it's not too flat.
let's see. Okay, so if you find that your highlights are too much for you, you can always um, use a thin down purple. Okay, and you can just go over it lightly if you want to dim it, dim the highlight a bit. Okay, so you can do that. But do this in layers so that um, no regrets. You might do it and then end up um, doing it too dark. So I'm covering the highlights just a tad, very pale, just to make it a bit not too bright. Okay, because of course it's not, again, it's, the skin is smooth, but it's not um, shiny. You know, it's not. Uh, shiny shiny not like um, apple like the skin of the apple okay so this is my the actual grapes now we just need to add the stem right here and that will be done so this is brown okay so let me just um, see which brown I'm going to go for okay let's use brown oxide right here okay, but I think it's a bit too yellow okay so this is brown so I'm just going to temper it down with purple okay cool okay so I do that too sometimes if I don't like if I find that the purple is a bit too yellow so this is the purple with uh, the brown with added purple and this is the brown oxide by itself so it's very warm okay so I don't want it to be too warm um, I added some some of the same purple that I used here the ultramarine violet so let's go over this this too we will do in layers so don't paint um, the top part because it will have a white edge there where it gets snapped and the whites inside show okay so first layer just thin down and just paint the whole thing remember thin down first first layer So you'll see that some of them are still showing through here, but some are inside, so you don't see them. But having these parts where they're visible uh, makes it look um, better. Okay, so let's now go and um, mix our darker brown. Again, I add some purple. And then I'll also add some blue, ultramarine blue. That's um, another way that I do, that I darken my browns. For trees, for tree trunks, I usually use um, burnt umber, raw umber with um, ultramarine blue. Okay, so don't worry, you can still, you know, tweak your browns. To get the right one okay so this is um, a much more neutral brown so I'm going to use this now for the darker areas
Okay, and I have some white showing through because um, it's not just one whole flat thing. Sorry, was that the brown and blue? Yes, brown and blue. I, I love it. Um, it's uh, for the very dark tree trunks. It's really perfect. Especially if you use the same blue to make some of the greens of your trees, um, then um, it will be harmonized with your other colors. Okay, so now let's just use um, brown and blue for darker brown. So sometimes you just can't get the brown that you're looking for. Just add other colors to it and you'll be able to um, get it. So I added now a mix a bit of red just for a, a warmer brown that I will layer again on top of here using the same red that I used for the grape. So just giving it a bit of warmth, but red warmth, not yellow. So your, even your stem will have more dimension and it will make things look much better. So I really recommend that you play with your colors and experiment with your mixtures. Um, that way you can also develop your own style of painting. You know, you don't need to follow the colors that I'm using. You can totally use colors that you feel are more your style. And there you go. Okay, so these are my grapes. I hope um, I was able to show you. You can totally add more layers. Okay, so there's... Um, um, this can be even made more um, textured if you want. So you can definitely add more layers to it. So again, um, I I started with the first layer and painted around the areas with the highlights. Just be sure when you do that, immediately spread the paint outwards because when you, um, if this is your grape and you did that technique and you painted around it, and then you left that to dry or you didn't work as quickly, this will dry and will leave a hard edge. So unless uh, you're okay with that, then you have to spread it immediately. It also depends on the paper that you're using. So if you're using um, hot pressed um, paper, then um, it's smoother. Um, it will give you more time to spread it out because it doesn't easily absorb, it doesn't quickly absorb the um, liquid but if you're using cold pressed 100% cotton it's very thirsty it can take so much water which is a good thing but if uh, if you're not used to it um, it will be some adjustment but it's actually great because um, it can take a lot of water okay so I hope um, I was able to show you I get very quick right very easy so I'm sure you guys can really really do this and you will really have fun so just be prepared to do the layers and don't be afraid for colors to not perfectly blend. As you can see, you can tell which areas have some red popping out, some of the blues, some. Th so the um, the shadows at the back, you can add um, another layer if you want them to be even um, deeper. But these are my grapes, and I hope um, you were able to um, see my process and see how e easy it is. So thank you everyone for joining me and uh, here are my small bunch of grapes as you can see very easy just practice with a small bunch and then in the future maybe you can do a big bunch um, and they're they're everywhere actually if you look at still life paintings um, there's a lot with grapes because well they're just sculptural already. So I hope you enjoyed it and um, thank you for joining me as always. So please do try it out and don't be afraid to experiment uh, and do your own colors. If you see things differently from me, go ahead. That's uh, what makes it special. So hope to see you again next time and have a great day. Bye.